This video is the ultimate guide to an iPad-based worship keys rig. You can use your iPad for all of your live keys sounds, and this video is gonna show you how. We'll break down choosing the right iPad for any budget, connecting an audio interface, a MIDI controller, and show you how it all comes together to give you an incredibly powerful and reliable live worship keys rig. Let's get it started. Five or six years ago, it would have been unthinkable to trust an iPad alone for all of your live key sounds. But today, iPads are so powerful that that is no longer a concern. And thanks to the Sunday Keys app, you can absolutely trust your iPad alone to give you amazing key sounds, powerful workflows, and reliable performance when you're on stage. Now, if you're new to the concept of using an iPad for all of your keys sounds, this is the video for you because we're gonna be breaking down everything you need step by step. And we're gonna be focusing on iPad rigs that will fit any church's budget, from absolutely lowest budget option to the most powerful pro level setup. Let's break it down step by step. If you're looking to buy a new iPad as you set up your keys rig, there are a lot of options to choose from. We think one of the best options is the new iPad Air. The iPad Air now features the exact same Apple Silicon chip as the iPad Pro, so it's an incredible value. That means you're gonna get lightning fast responsiveness, great performance and reliability from your iPad-based keys rig. I was able to buy this iPad Air new on Amazon at a discount for about $560. You're not gonna be hurting for performance with the iPad Air thanks to Apple Silicon. Now, if you want to spend a little bit more money and get a larger screen, you could buy a new iPad Pro. Of course, the iPad Pro is super powerful thanks to Apple Silicon, and there is a benefit, in my opinion, to the larger screen size. These faders are larger, all of the touch targets are larger, and when you're performing on stage, that could be very convenient and helpful. You're gonna be looking at very similar performance as compared to the iPad Air, but it's more of an investment. So it's up to you to decide whether that smaller form factor with smaller screen is acceptable to you, or if it's worth spending some more money to get the larger screen. Either way, performance and reliability is gonna be great with any new iPad featuring Apple Silicon. Now, if you're on a tighter budget, you could buy a new or used base iPad model. The base iPad is a lot less powerful. It doesn't feature the newest Apple Silicon chips, but as long as you're okay with optimizing some settings and keeping your set list to a reasonable size, you can still trust them to perform reliably when you're on stage. Brand new, these run about $300, and if you're willing to look on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, or websites that sell refurbished iPads like Mac of all trades, you could snag one for even less, maybe $150, $200, $250. Now, depending on which iPad model you buy, you might find that it has a lightning port instead of a USB-C port like the newer iPads. That's not an issue, but the connections are slightly different. Now, regardless of which iPad model you choose to use, it's only going to have one port on the side, typically used for charging. So to connect all of your devices, you're going to need to use a USB hub to give you expanded ports to connect to. There are lots and lots of USB hubs out there and it can be super confusing to find one that will actually do everything you need it to do. In fact, most USB ports out there aren't actually capable of charging your iPad and connecting your other devices at the same time. That means while you're performing on stage, your iPad might run out of battery and die. So we've done a bunch of research to find a couple rock solid options that are capable of powering your MIDI controller, your audio interface, and charging your iPad. Right here on the table is our absolute favorite option. It's an Anchor powered USB hub. It's the best choice in our opinion for any iPad featuring a USB-C port. So it connects to your iPad just into the USB-C port like that. Power goes straight into the wall. This allows it to charge your iPad and to provide power to any connected USB devices and then it gives you four USB-A ports, which is more than adequate for any keys rig. This Anchor Hub is available on Amazon, typically runs between $30 and $50. Now, most USB-C hubs actually have a very short cable. This is only a few inches long, so I like to use a simple USB-C extender cable. That just gives me more flexibility when I'm wiring up my rig, so the hub doesn't have to be within a few inches of the iPad itself. The second USB hub option we'd recommend for any iPad with a USB-C port is also from Anchor. This is a USB-C hub that connects in the exact same way as the other Anchor hub, but it gives you a couple different port options. You have two USB-A ports and a USB-C port available to input to your iPad. Now, the thing that this is missing that you need to know is that it doesn't include a built-in power supply. So you actually have to get a power supply 
of your own. So you cannot use your stock iPad power supply for this task because it doesn't supply enough wattage to charge the iPad and power your devices. So if you plug it in and try, your iPad's gonna falter and probably run out of battery while you're on stage. That means you need to purchase or use a more powerful charger that you have. So I actually have my MacBook charger here which supplies plenty of power. So I actually connect that into the PD port that stands for power delivery on this hub. Then I plug all of my MIDI controllers and audio interfaces into this side. And then the charger does all the work of supplying power to those connected devices and making sure that the iPad has plenty of juice. This Anchor Hub is really high quality. It looks slick on stage and has good I.O. The only real downside compared to the other is that you need to have that separate power supply for it to be able to work for a keys rig. Now let's talk about what USB hub to use if your iPad features a lightning port instead of a USB-C port. This just requires one extra connector to make everything work. It's the Apple USB 3 camera adapter. It's a lightning jack on this side that plugs into your iPad itself. And then on the other side, you have a lightning port and a single USB-A port. So it's important, as I said, to keep your iPad charging while you're performing on stage. So the first thing you're gonna do is actually use your iPad charger itself and connect it to the lightning jack on the adapter. So then this plug is gonna go into your wall and supply power to the iPad itself. Now we have this USB-A port and we're gonna connect a powered USB hub to it. This is where we're gonna plug in our audio interface and our MIDI controller. So it doesn't really matter what USB-A hub you use as long as it has a separate power supply of its own. That makes sure your audio interface and MIDI controllers get plenty of juice. We like this Anchor powered USB hub. It gives you seven USB-A ports and it's relatively inexpensive. We'll put a link in the description. So you're gonna plug in all of your USB devices like your interface and your MIDI controller to these ports on the top. And then on the back side here, you have a power supply that's gonna go into the wall and then you have a USB out. This is gonna go to right here. So you're gonna plug the USB hub right here into the adapter, and that is it. So really the only extra step here is needing this adapter from Apple so you can still charge the iPad and get USB-A out to your hub. Once you have a USB hub connected to your iPad and providing it with power, it's time to connect your MIDI controller. You can connect virtually any MIDI keyboard to your iPad. Most modern keyboards can connect directly over a USB cable. So if you've got a USB port or a USB-C port or even a USB-A port on the back, all you need is a cable that ends with USB-A so you can connect it to your hub. So I can just grab this cable here, plug it right into the port, and I'm ready to play. If your keyboard's a little bit older and doesn't have USB on the back, or if it requires a driver that you can't install on your iPad, you can still use it really easily. All you need is one of these. This is a MIDI to USB-A adapter. On one side, there are MIDI jacks. You'll plug this into the back of your keyboard, and then the other side is just USB-A. So you would just plug that into your hub and be ready to go. If you use a MIDI to USB adapter like this, you're gonna have to use a separate power supply to make sure your keyboard receives power because MIDI doesn't supply power. Also, if you're using an audio interface that has MIDI ports on the back, you can actually skip the adapter and just use a MIDI cable directly from your keyboard to your audio interface, and then the interface will send MIDI into your iPad. And that leads us to our next topic, audio. Once your MIDI controller is connected to your iPad, all that's left is to send audio from the iPad to your sound desk. There's several ways to do this, and the most common one is to use a USB audio interface, like this. This is one of our favorite budget-friendly options. It's the PreSonus Audio Box. This is a simple, high-quality audio interface with good audio quality and very high build quality. It gives you a stereo output on the back, and it also has MIDI ports. So if you wanna connect your keyboard through the interface, you can do that here. So let's go ahead and wire this up. I have a USB-A to USB-B cable. USB-B is gonna go into the back of the audio box, and USB-A is gonna go right into the Anchor Hub. When you connect an audio interface to your iPad, the iPad is automatically going to recognize the interface and make it the designated audio output. Once the interface is connected to the hub, grab a couple instrument cables and get them connected to your sound desk. 
Now that all your gear is connected to the iPad, you can open the Sunday Keys app and get playing. The Sunday Keys app is what makes an iPad-based keys rig like this possible. Inside of Sunday Keys, you'll find all of the sounds you're looking for to play modern worship music and powerful tools to prepare and perform with confidence. Organize the patches and sounds you need into simple set lists so you can stay organized and execute both during preparation and while you're on stage. You can keep things simple by building set lists with ready to play layered patches that sound amazing. Or you can get specific and design your own patches from scratch with the perfect sounds for the songs you need to play. With an experience designed with touchscreens in mind, it's easy to take control of your live performances. Or if you prefer something a bit more tactile, you can easily connect any MIDI controller with hardware faders, buttons, or knobs. Now that everything is set up and running, let's talk a little bit about the form and function of how you can use this on stage. A common question is what sort of iPad stand or holder should I use so that I can easily grab everything I need to in real time, but it's not ugly or unstable on stage. Here's a couple of iPad stands that we recommend. One of the most low profile options we found is actually the stand we've been using for this entire video. It's underneath this iPad right here. This is a really low profile tablet stand that does have a base that clicks out like that so you can adjust the angle. This is available on Amazon, super inexpensive. If your keyboard has a bunch of space on the top, you could just gaff tape or Velcro this stand to the top of that keyboard and then place your iPad on top it's gonna be really low profile without a bunch of visual disconnect between you and the congregation. And it's gonna be nice and sturdy as well. This next budget friendly option is also quite low profile, but it does have a telescoping arm. So you have a little bit more control over the height. So you can actually go a little bit taller if you want and you can adjust it. So one of my favorite things to do for this is if I have a tabletop style keyboard stand, I'll actually slip this underneath the keyboard and that allows me to sort of hover the iPad over the top. Now here are a couple of options that fasten to a microphone stand on stage. So you can place this holder wherever you'd want in relation to your keyboard. This first option is sort of a knockoff no-name brand on Amazon. We found that for the price, because it's very affordable, it does a pretty good job and is relatively stable on stage. If you're using something larger like an iPad Pro, you're not gonna get very much width in terms of how it's held, so you might find that it shakes a little bit, but if you're using a lighter weight iPad, or if it's sort of sitting over the top of your keyboard and actually coming into contact with the top, this is more than stable enough, and again, it's a really budget-friendly option, so we'll link this in the description. This next option is from the OnStage Stands brand. This option from OnStage Stands feels a good bit sturdier than the no-name brand we just mentioned. It also mounts to a mic stand, but in my opinion, it feels like it wobbles a lot less anytime I'm interacting with the iPad. There's a little bit higher cost that you're paying for that stability, but if you're making an investment in your rig long-term, I think it's worth considering something like this. Now, it starts off small and then opens up to accommodate anything up to an iPad Pro 12.9. So you'd mount it like this if you're using an iPad Pro. The arm also has a lot of flexibility, so you can be very specific about the position and angle of the iPad in relation to your keyboard. I really like this stand, and if I were gonna buy something to mount on a microphone stand, this is what I'd go with. We'll put a link in the description if you'd like to check out this stand. Using the Sunday Keys app live, running on an iPad, is an awesome experience. Designed for modern worship, and perfect for your church. We've put links in the description to all of the gear that we've talked about so far in this video. So if you're on a tight budget or you wanna go for a pro level setup, check out those links. Now the most important thing is how it sounds and feels to use live. So keep watching this video for some examples of the Sunday Keys app running on an iPad.